Hello, A2 students. I'm Tanya Chu, and I'm going to guide you on the, um, paper five today. It is the first question of paper five. It is called the planning experiment question. And I noticed that most of the students found the A2 paper five, especially the first questions, very hard. So that is why I'm going to give you some guideline on answering paper five. Yeah. So planning experiment. So first of all, this is about our paper five and the duration of our paper five is one hour, 15 minutes. And you have two questions in paper five. The first question is the planning experiment. So which carries 15, 15% of and the other one is your second question, which is about plotting the graph. All the data are given, all the readings are given. You're supposed to plot the graph and you are supposed to do some calculations on the errors, on the uncertainties, and you have to plot the uh, two graphs, best fit graph and the worst fit graph and find your error bars, etc. So for the first question, the suggested time that you're supposed to spend on the first question since you have limited duration, which is one hour, 15 minutes. So my suggestion is you spend 15 minute, 50 minutes for the first question and 25 minutes for the second question. So some of the students ask, is it possible to spend 25 minutes for the second question because a lot of uh, calculations involved? Yeah, my answer is yes. Nothing is impossible, right? When you practice it, like when you do a lot of practices, you notice that we finish second question within 20 minutes, actually. So my suggestion as well, when you receive your paper five, always start with second question first and spend only 25 minutes on that. Because for first question, you need a lot of time to think, you need a lot of time to plan, you need a lot of time to like, yeah, you might lose, you might, you might be thinking hard about the experiments, thinking hard about the apparatus that you're supposed to use, yeah? So, so some guidelines here, tell yourself first, be confident, tell yourself that you can do this, just like me there. So first question, okay, the first, uh, this is a format that I have for you. So first is to draw your labored diagram. So when you see the question, when you read through the question, yeah, always make a draft first, yeah? And then after that, your labored diagram. Diagram, no matter how beautiful yeah, your diagram is, but without labeling, you're not going to score any mark. Yeah, And you can see here in a new format, they don't really give mark for the labored diagram. So why labored diagram is so important? Yeah, so to some students, yeah, maybe one hour, 15 minutes is not enough to complete your paper five. So if you have lack of time, you might not be able to write down all the procedure, uh, the analysis, the safety precautions, or the additional details. So labor diagram will be the one that will help you to score mark, yeah? Because the examiner will always help you, yeah? So when they see something that you draw, yeah? in your labored diagram, and you labored the diagram, definitely. So this is something that you draw there, that, that something is actually one of the precautions. Like for example, if you drop a ball onto the ground, you're supposed to calculate the distance yeah, of the ball that drop on the ground. So if you draw a basin yeah, that filled with sand in your diagram and you labored that diagram, you're definitely going to score that mark. Can you see that? So I will always tell my student, labor diagram is very important. So make sure that you draw only 2D diagram. We don't need 3D, yeah? So make sure the 2D diagram that you drew is labored, yeah? So that is the first step. And definitely two marks will be given when you define your variables, yeah? So you have independent variable, one independent variable, from the question itself, from the statements that is given, and you have one dependent variable. So some student might want to ask, okay, how do I differentiate between independent and dependent variable? Independent variable is something 
can vary easily, something that you can change easily. Like for example, um, the length of the ruler. Yeah, you are you just changing the length. Or uh, you might want to vary your frequency. You can use signal generator to just, you just adjust yeah, the frequency on your signal generator. And dependent variable will be some variable that depends on your independent variable. Yeah, so, and you also have variables to be kept constant. Bear in mind that never write this, okay? Never write constant variable because that is totally wrong. Why it is wrong? Because first of all, variable is something, some physical quantity that you can vary. But constant is something that you have to make sure it is constant. So when you put that word in, constant variable, it causes a lot of confusion. I'll be wondering, are you going to put it as constant? Are you going to put that physical quantity as constant? Or are you going to vary that physical quantity? Can you see that? So always write this, variables to be kept constant. Yeah. So you always have to write more than one variables to be kept constant, yeah? Don't just stop at one, write more, yeah? It will help you with your safety precautions as well as additional details, yeah? And of course, after that, the next step is your procedure or your methods of conducting the experiments. You are supposed to plan the experiment. So you have to think of yourself as the planner, that will plan an experiment for those AS students that will be sitting for paper three. You have done your paper three and you have seen your the paper three before. And can you see that the procedure on the paper three are quite accurate and are quite detailed. So you are supposed to do something like that. You're supposed to write your procedure, something like your paper three. So procedure will give you four marks, yeah? First of all, you have to set out the apparatus as shown in the diagram. And second mark, focus on your independent variable. How are you supposed to measure your independent variable? If your independent variable is your length, then tell us what, what is the apparatus that I can use to measure my length? For example, maybe um, you can use ruler, measuring tape, and etc. And how are you going to vary your length, for example? Yeah, so discuss about that. And after that, discuss about the methods of your measuring dependent variable. So how are you going to measure? How are you going to calculate your dependent variable? Like, for example, maybe you are asked to, uh, maybe your dependent variable is your resistance. Yeah, if you are using voltmeter and ammeter, there is, yeah, there is uh, some uh, calculations that you have to show us. Tell us how are we supposed to determine our resistance from the reading of the voltmeter and the reading of ammeter. Yeah, so that is, those are the things that you are supposed to focus on. Focus on your independent variable, focus, your focus on your dependent variable as well. Yeah, and the last step is normally repeat the experiments with different values of your independent variables to get yeah more readings for dependent variables so that you can plot a graph. Yeah, that is about procedure. And the next one is the analysis. Analysis, I would say that it is the easiest part to score full marks. And the total mark given here is three marks for analysis. So you just got to tell us a graph of, yeah, maybe your independent variable against your dependent variable is plotted. Yeah. If a graph is a straight line graph, yeah, straight, you have two types of straight line graph. One is the straight line graph with a y intercept. And the other one is the straight line graph that starts from origin. So you have to be more specific in that. If a straight line graph starts from origin, so you got to tell us that if a straight line graph start from origin, yeah, is obtained, then the relationship is valid. Or a straight line graph with the y-intercept of this is obtained, then the relationship is valid. 
yeah be more specific on the straight line graph that you plot yeah you're going to discuss yeah and of course you have to talk about the gradient of the graph just give us the three points there yeah so that you can score all the three marks there and the y-intercept as well so if you are asked to find a constant yeah so just modify your equation yeah and let's say uh one equation a is equal to b k square for example or, or y for example so a graph of a this is your y-axis is plotted against um y for example this is your x-axis for example so your gradient of the graph should be b k square can you see that in this case we have no y-intercept so so you have to tell us that if a graph is a straight line graph passing through the origin then the relationship is valid yeah so to find the value of k for example yeah k square so you have to compare so gradient of the graph is equals to k, b k square so k is equal to gradient divided by b and square with the answer that is how you do it yeah so and of course the last part is about your additional details and your safety precautions that will give you the total mark of six marks yeah the hardest part to score is actually this part here yeah you have to do a lot of practices yeah so that you have more ideas so first if you want to write down about your safety uh, additional details you may want to talk about the methods of making the variables constant yeah so for example how are you supposed to let's say one of the variables to be kept constant is the temperature yeah temperature of water maybe so how are you supposed to make that temperature of water constant so for example yeah or the other example is um the um area of uh, a certain material maybe the area of the block so how are you going to make sure that the area of the block is constant yeah one of the way is using back the same block yeah throughout the whole experiment yeah and you could also talk about the ways of improving the experiment if the experiment is about the light so you may want to suggest that uh, conduct the experiment in a dark room so that the results that you obtain is more reliable yeah so yeah and the difficulties uh, you can also talk about the difficulties that you face that the the difficulties that uh, the students were facing in the experiment and the limitations of the experiments as well yeah as your additional details yeah and of course safety precautions yeah when you talk about bare wire i'm not talking about this bear i'm talking about this bare wire what is this bear b-a-r-e wire bare wire is without insulator yeah so normally it's about your potential meter yeah the wire that you put on top of your meter roll yeah so that is what we call bare wire so when you handle your bare wire make sure that you use rubber glove yeah so that is one of the safety precautions yeah so and uh if you find that this video is useful yeah i hope that you will subscribe to my youtube channel and um you know what um, I'm going to thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. So let me know after you have subscribed to my YouTube channel. I'll be giving you the PDF notes on the suggested instruments that we have in the lab on how to measure a certain variables like for example how are you supposed to measure your uh, resistance how are you supposed to measure your magnetic field strength magnetic flux etc and of course i'll be giving you be giving you step by step in answering the designing question so first step what are you supposed to do so second step what are you supposed to do with together with my own sample answer yeah i thank you for listening yeah yay we have make it to the end see you next time bye